Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer, joined today as always by my colleague and co-host Lisa Roman, broadcaster and analyst. In today's episode, we have a special guest joining us today on Attacking Third, but a quick reminder to subscribe to us on YouTube for exclusive interviews whenever we go live at youtube.com slash attacking third. Today's guest a two-time World Cup champion, a two-time Olympic gold medalist, former U.S. midfielder, and now author, legend, Julie. Author. (laughs) (laughs) Author. I wrote this whole book. I'm taking credit. Oh, I love you. Thank you. You, you, you write. I see you. I see Uh, your byline. I I have written a book. I, I know. I, I, I've seen your byline on a, on a little website called ESPN. You know, I don't know if anyone's <laughs> heard of it, but listen, we're so we're so thrilled to have you, uh, you know, back on the show. We, we've spoken with you a few times in person when Attacking Third has gone out to Los Angeles. Yeah. But this is your first virtual one on one interview with us. So so welcome back to the show. Oh, thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, we're so happy to chat with you because it's a it's a busy time. It's a busy time yeah, for holy cow. for soccer globally. Uh, let's let's start with with the big big event happening right now. The men's World Cup is happening right now. Uh, United States are in a group with Iran, England, and Wales. Uh, I'm sure your days are filled with plenty of hours watching uh, the biggest tournament in the world. Uh, let's 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 have fun right at the top of this. We we usually do predictions when we do like game day type of inter or uh, game day type of episodes. Uh, yeah. Do you have a prediction for the oh, USA United? winning it all? Let's go! <laughs> Come on! That's Sandra. what we like to hear. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> I mean, it's a young, feisty group. They're going I actually, all the way. I like this. I like, I know the U S team hasn't been playing that well as of late, but really like given it's a November start, I feel like everyone's in this weird funk. It's such a weird start time. So I don't think any national team, when you look at these past windows where you were like, ah, oh, they were amazing. So I'm not uh, as worried as a lot of U S fans are with their youth. I think it's fantastic. I think you go into this, like what we have nothing to lose. Let's go. And good energy. And this U S team seems to have a ton of good chemistry too. Like they enjoy each other. They, they're, they seem very much on the same page. They're having fun. I love all of that. All of those are such good signs. I'm like, yes, yes. Let me keep reading this. Yes. I I mean, I like it. I like the prediction for U S to go all the way because it's been a little bit since they've been in this position and the energy is just different in a world cup and being in November, it's, it's odd, but because the men's world cup is happening now in November, it also means that the 2023 women's world cup is just eight months away, which is just crazy. Incredibly yeah. nuts, incredibly nuts. The draw happened. The yeah. U.S. women are in a group with Netherlands, Vietnam, and then one of, of three other choices, Portugal, Cameroon, Thailand. Julie, when you saw the group, you saw the draw for the U.S. women's team for the uh, World Cup. What were your initial reactions, especially the Netherlands in this group, right? This is a. Yeah. Well, we didn't get Sweden or, or Nigeria. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> How is this possible? <laughs> um I, I think um, I, I actually like it. I mean, I, I, obviously the Netherlands, we have, you know, this short term history with obviously mm. with, you know, last World Cup, last Olympics. Um, but the fact that they don't have to travel, as we know, you know, you have what Canada, poor Canada. I mean, they got <laughs> they get, they oh. fall out of that top six. So they got taken out of pot one. And then now they've got to go, you know, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast, back to Perth, back to the East Coast. I mean, it's a it, It's a lot of traveling for them versus the United States in that group. They stay their first three games in New Zealand. I mean, it's a very winnable group. Um, I think with the expanded field of 32 teams, you see that, um, that, you know, you have a pretty clear delineation of those top two teams in the groups, but um, I think it's a good group. I think it's a good matchup. And on the other side of the bracket that you don't have to worry about until the final, I think is what Germany, France, uh, Brazil, there was like five of the top nine teams. I think we're on the other side. So I like it. I wanted to, I want to follow up on that. Cause I, I, the thing about the draws, it's, it's always exciting, right? It sort of feels like it hits the reset button for those world cup preparations because you, you're, you're playing international window if friendlies after friendly, after friendly, but once that draw gets settled in, it's like it hits a little bit of a reset button, doesn't it? And you're like, okay, yes, this, the oh, preparation, yeah. 
starts now but with this group there's still like a fourth team lingering yeah it could be a cameroon yeah. it could it could be a portugal, portugal. it could be a thailand yeah. what's what is that like when you sort of want to hit that reset button and say let's go but you still actually kind of have to wait a couple months to get the, the full picture of that group yeah. um i think i i i think the what the draw does it's less about who you play we've always been of the mindset like who cares we're going to win this freaking thing. And it doesn't matter who we match up when, like, let's just go in a game, game by game, never take, you know, take a team for granted and, um, and expect to be on top of the podium. I mean, that's always been the mindset of this U S team. So it's not so much that they don't know. I think it's just good that you're finally like, okay, the draw happened. This is for real. And because what that signals obviously to the staff, to the coaches, to the players is, we've, we've got to pay attention to the little things now, like everyone's doing the big things. Now it's all about the details and getting that cohesion, getting that chemistry, getting that confidence, um, not going on a four game losing streak. Thank God. Uh, yeah. things like that. So, uh, you know, that, I think that's the thing. I mean, obviously they know that they've got to wait till February for that last group group, but I think it's just that you're locked in on, okay, let's go. It's time. You, you mentioned it where we wanted to ask you about that too. You know, the, the U S closed out their calendar year with a handful of, of really uh, good games, right? They went to Europe to go face England and Spain. They closed out with a, a couple of friendlies against Germany, but within that there was a little bit of a skid before they said enough of that and closed out the year with that two, one win over Germany. Uh, you were on the call for, for one of those games. What's, what's the biggest thing for this team coming out of that window, that stretch of games as they look ahead to a world cup year? Yeah. Well, no one wants to be the team. I wrote about this for ESPN. No one wants to be the team that had a four game stretch, right? That, and you could, you could really sense there was some stress within the group talking to black the night before, as we always do um, with the broadcast group and, you know, all the stuff he gives us on background, it was like, okay, it, you know, we're, we're looking at this. And I said, any extra pressure? And he's like, I, this this job is pressure from day one it's been pressure so not really but obviously no one wanted to be that team um the thing that you know I, I was in less of a panic mode than I think most of the U.S. fans um but the thing that I I'm probably most worried about is just how they've been playing right it's it's one thing we haven't the U.S. hasn't played uh Jen Cooper was always sending me stats bless her um you know was you know texting me before the game and saying you know the u.s has never done four back to back to back to back games against top 10 teams that haven't been at home in terms of friendlies like usually you have that stretch but they are she believes cup or they're part of a friendly at home and they're all at home and so you know for us which means you know obviously losing those three games you you don't want to ever see but like because they had to play them away and um they hadn't done that in a long time is why that had never happened so the thing that's more concerning to me is the fact that like we're not holding the ball we're not playing with you know the swagger i think we can with as many creative players as we have we're not dictating the pace of the game we're not pressing as much as i think too and as we as we should and the other thing is it's like most of the goals for the u.s come off uh, a mistake it comes off uh sophia or mal just using their pace to get in behind it's not like oh let's connect eight nine ten passes and then it opens up the seam and then we're in there's no run of play fluid uh gorgeous goals like that and not to say that you don't want to score in these transitional moments but that can't be the only thing and i think that's the most concerning thing because that this team is creative as we know and you have a ton of good players why why even against top 10 teams are we not holding the ball, ball more right I, I think i mean you said so much of it correctly and the mentality and that's been talked about at this point as as you look at this team and if you could talk to them individually, right. Or say one thing to them, like, Hey, this is, this is what you should be thinking about. Like, where should their mindset be? What would you tell them, Julie? Slow it down. <laughs> Everything's a hundred miles per hour. Like, Hey, you don't have to 
every transitional moment, get in behind, like slow the game down and then speed it up, slow it down. You know how you see so often, it's just like bounce it off a player, get it back, bounce it off a player, get it back. Our lines are so spread out that you can't bounce it off a player and get it back because you're 30 yards between our lines. It's like, just slow it down a little bit, control the, the tempo a little bit more. And I love that we're, you know, very eager and it's hundred miles per hour, but it reminds me of Hayo in her early days with the national team. I was like, sister, breathe, just take a breath. Oh my God. She was like, like a little puppy, just running, 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 running. I'm like, slow down, stop. I love um, that. Yeah. And that's how I feel they are right now. They're very earnest in, and that's in our DNA. I get it. We want to run and gun, but we also have the ability with this group to play. Let's play. We can play against the best teams in the world. We should be able to play. I love it. Speaking of the U.S. Women's National Team, the history, the legacy, uh, you, Julie Fowdy, you wrote a book. You co-wrote a book. You helped write a book. You, I, you were not, in the room. I, I wrote the foreword, you guys. Let's be clear. Come <laughs> on. You were in the room when they wrote the book. You were there. You were involved somehow. <laughs> And, and that's all, what we, all my book. Yes. <laughs> so this is the very first official history of the United States women's yeah. national team soccer book. It's called pride of a nation, a celebration of the U S women's national soccer team, an official U S soccer book. I mean, if anything, you wrote the title, you deserve a, a byline in this because it's, it's long and it's beautiful, <laughs> but Gwendolyn Oxenham deserves the credit that you, as we know, that woman can write. And so when they said Gwen, when Gwendolyn was like, I'm writing for this book and it's this gorgeous picture book. And I mean, it is, it's beautiful. Um, yeah. And you flip through it and it's the eighties, the nineties, the two thousands, it's the history of the book and Gwendolyn's writing to that history as well. And there's nothing in one place like this, which is what I love that shows the progression. It shows what this team's been about for so many years. It talks about the old bags and uh, in a sense, and the pioneers that, you know, became, I consider myself an old bag. And then that you had the group before us in the eighties. Um, so it's, I, and it's all in one place. It's really cool. So yeah, I, I was uh, asked to do the forward and I, I happily obliged and, um, and I'm, I'm really proud of how it turned out. Yeah, as you should be. So you you touched on it a little bit. You knew that Gwen was involved in it. They asked you to do the forward, but really, how did this come about? Really, what were the steps that um, to getting this started and getting it off the ground to now being a published book? So David Hershey is one of the writers and editor. He's he's been a writer and he he's one of the editors on um, on this book. He's been around in soccer forever, and um, he uh, approached me and said, hey, Gwendolyn is going to do this as well. And would you be willing to write the forward? And, and this is what we want to do. There's there's really been no book like this done where it really shows the, uh, the comprehensive history of this women's national team and all that you guys have done. And in a beautiful way, in a picture book type of way that you could put on your coffee table, but it also talks and tells the stories as well as Gwendolyn, I think, does better than anyone. Um, and... And so, yeah, it was an easy sell. I was like, yes, I'll do that. I would love to do that. So, um, yeah, and obviously with, you know, COVID and supply issues and all of that, I, you know, I'm, I'm so pleased it's, it's uh, you know, just about to come out, but it's taken a long time for them to put together and they've done a really good job. I wanted to ask you about a little bit more of the, of the process with that, you know, working alongside uh, Gwendolyn Oxenham and obviously others. What what was that process like in terms of um, getting into a room or whether those were virtual rooms and sort of, you know, gathering all yeah. the information? Is it, was it a wine Zoom? Was it a non-wine Zoom? <laughs> uh, what, what was it like sort of making sure that, you know, memory and stories and history got down on paper, essentially? Yeah, well... For Gwendolyn, she's a dear friend and she lives uh, in the area, but our initial, so I see her often, um, we're neighbors pretty much. We live like 15 minutes from each other. Uh, but the initial call was a big Zoom with, you know, here's what this book could look like. This is what we want to tell. These are the stories. What would you like to write in the forward? You know, my big thing is what I love most about this team is it really is this sisterhood and it's... Um, it's so much more than just, you know, standing on top of podiums that, that of course is in, which is what I write to in the forward. It's, it's been important and it's been a focus. Of course we want to win and we want to haul in tr titles and trophies and all those things. Um, but really the thing that I've loved the most about this national team 
from every generation is that we just care deeply about leaving the world, not the just the game, um, and women in a better place. And how can we um, showcase that? And how can we talk about that? And I mean, equal pay fight, of course, and back in my day, it was more for equitable pay, but it's just this history of caring about topics that typically, you know, people would say it's not in your lane. And we say, yes, it is. It, everything's in our lane and we're going to talk about it. And we're not just going to stand on top of this podium. We're going to shout for the world to get better while we're on top of the podium. And that's the thing I've always loved about this group. And we've seen it obviously with this current group um, getting equal pay over the line. And that's been the really fun part about this the sisterhood and watching it as a, it's almost maternal, this proud mama moment of like, oh, our babies are still, they're still going. There are stories, memories, detailing all of these incredible events. And re honestly, the read is fantastic. But for you, Julie, what was one of the most challenging parts of completing this book? Um, well, again, my part was pretty easy. So I just had to do the forward. Um, I think the the challenging thing was, uh, you know, the burden Gwendolyn had had to carry in terms of how much she had to to dig into. You know, I, I mean, there's stories about the historical context of our pregame cheer, which I didn't even know, right? Like I, we every time everyone probably knows who's a, a diehard U.S. women's national team fan, we do USA 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 uh, in the huddle, and the USA. I had thought came from the fact that when we were in China or we were in Europe in the 90s, early 90s, you know, whenever anyone asked, you know, where we were from, we would say USA, they would respond, oh, USA. And we just thought that was so funny. We were like, what the heck? Well, it actually comes from Italy. The very first trip the team in the mid 80s took, first national team, and they were chanting in, in the stadium in Italy, USA. USA, and they made that into the cheer. And so it goes back even, you know, predating our 90s group. So um, it's that kind of stuff that you had to kind of call out of people and, uh, and, and talk to so many different generations, which is what I also like, because you hear from uh, Emily Pickering, who's on that 80s team, and you hear from, uh, you know, Karen Jennings Gabera. Uh, and so, you know, April Heinrichs, it's like this, you know, Michelle Akers, it's just this really layered history of this team. It, within the challenges is, is maybe that also on the other side of the coin, maybe one of the more rewarding parts of, of being a part of this book and this project, like, sort of unlocking those types of, uh, of yeah, stories exactly. or is that one of the or oh, yeah, are there totally. other rewarding parts for yeah. you <laughs> yeah and um having it all in one place i mean you you hear the stories and you've read them maybe in articles but they're they've always it's like oh my gosh i didn't know that i mean i i i, I had my parents over the other day and they were like oh my God, I didn't know half this stuff, right? I'm like, I know I'm the same way. That's what I say when I'm reading it. So it really is unlocking it in a beautiful way in one place. Um, and it's not just a read, it's visual. It's so visual, which I like as well. Cause I, you know, I like, I like my Oh coloring. yeah. Oh yeah. The visual aspects of it. I mean, yes, the, the never were heard stories or like the unlocking of the USA chant and where that came from, the origin of that, but the pictures, 250 full color pictures. There is a young Julie in there. We get to see you as a, as a little soccer player. We get to yeah. see Lori Lindsay, good friend of the pod, Ali Wagner, good friend of the pod, uh, yeah. behind the scenes, action shots. It, it's got everything in there in terms of images, images yeah. that Fans that are diehards have never, ever seen before. You're looking yeah. at it right now. I can tell you are. I, I am. I'm, I'm going through and it's like, you just keep, I, I got it on blur. So I don't know if you can see. You just keep yeah, seeing. I mean, look at that image. I love that image. It's, it's amazing. So what are some of the best photos in here um, in your mind, whether they bring you joy because it's a memory that you remember and now you get to visualize it a little bit more or, or pictures that you think yeah. fans will love to see. What are some of those for you? Um, I, like just the Megan Rapino iconic image we saw from the 2019 World Cup. Um, this one right now I'm looking at is Abby playing Brazil in the 2004 Olympics. I mean, Abby, of course, scoring um, that goal where I just want to kiss her forehead every time I see her that like keeps us in it. I mean, we, we, we got like <laughs> that. I don't, I can't believe we won that Olympics. So you go back and you look through these 
and then the generations, right? So you got Parlo, you got Milbert, you got, uh, and then you 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 flip forward to Heyo and Shannon Box and all of these iconic moments. Christy Pierce, um, I just Angela Hughley's. Remember when Abby broke her leg? I mean, I forgot about all that story. That and obviously Gwendolyn wrote to that. It, Abby broke her leg. The the send off game going over to the Olympics in China in 2008. And then Angela Hughley steps up and crushes it and they win gold. So I don't know. I just love, I, I, I oh, the snow game. Do you remember that one? Oh yeah. That's in there. Um, I'm flipping through right now. It's so good. It's Becky so Sauer good. And bleeding. You can always, <laughs> I mean, anytime Becky Sauer is bleeding. If you're a fan of blood, there's blood in this book. I'd love to. <laughs> Gotta, gotta oh play. yeah the one where they're celebrating i think this is 2019 with the sam us they've got their budweiser's and yeah. goggles on ah it's good it's really good i love that i, I and i love uh <laughs> look if, if folks aren't if they're more about like uh you know consuming their news or their information uh whether it's like this like in a video format or you know uh, non-reading it there's look there's a ton of images you could just go through and take a look at in this book there's um, the, the uh, front and back like film national teamers doing this from all the different generations like going through going oh my god oh my god <laughs> i mean the front and back covers are are little kid soccer pictures of yes iconic women's national team players and uh, when i first got the book one of the first things i did was look through and see if i could identify all identify. of them because Same. they're like little tykes i'm like who is this julia I recognized you don't worry but yep. it, it's My it's one of the machine. yes a green machine jersey like there it's just so many different images and types of images from the little kid pictures to the action shots to the behind the scenes it's a fantastic book yeah I so know. let's uh usually when we do these um when we do interviews with with a special guest we usually try to like have a little bit of like we'll throw like a fun question at them towards the end but for for this for, when we knew we were going to talk about this book we wanted to maybe close out this interview with maybe something a little bit more reflective versus just like hey what's your coffee order um so <laughs> this book we're, we're talking about you know about the contents that are in it you know the the photos the the memories the the stories that are getting unlocked within it as you're going through it so as as someone who has been around and has seen so much um what do you want to see for that next book that next book that comes out a generation from now yeah um well, the thing you're seeing as you, you know, my, I have a 15 year old and a 13 year old and my 15 year old plays soccer. My daughter, my son's like too much running. Don't want to do that. I'm like, I get that. I, I agree with that. <laughs> uh, but my 15 year old, the thing that's super interesting is as you're seeing these younger teams now coming through the diversity of player. Right. And we're seeing it, obviously, with the transition into this younger group on the national team. And I love that because I'm flipping through at the end and I'm seeing Katerina Macario. I'm seeing Sophia Smith. I'm seeing Mal Pugh. Right. Naomi Gurma, Alana Cook. You just you had back in my day, you had Saskia Weber, Stacey Wilson, Thori Bryant. There wasn't there was no diversity. Obviously, we knew it was a very middle class, white, suburban uh, sport. And. What I love to see when I'm, you know, cruising the fields, watching my kid play is that there's young gals who come from, uh, you know, maybe Mexican heritage or Hispanic heritage or uh, Latinas and black women. And I'm like, oh, finally, right? Like we're starting to see that shift. And I just hope that's that's the next book is it's going to be a sport that actually is inclusive. And obviously we've gotten to equal pay. Um, but we go to a space where every young girl who is out there, regardless of their upbringing or where they live in uh, in an urban area or a rural area or um, black, white, doesn't matter their color, they can play. And that's where um, I think our success will lie going forward on the field and off because it truly is now an inclusive sport. Great way to close out. Julie Fadi, thank you so much for joining us today on Attacking Third, chatting all things United States Women's National Team. Everybody, you can download, follow, and subscribe to Attacking Third anywhere you get your podcast. Julie Foudy, let us know where everybody can get the book if they want to purchase this 
historical document? Um, I believe it is on Amazon. I, you can get every book on Amazon. I probably should know what that link is, but I do not know. <laughs> um, right. But yeah, it's on Amazon. You can you can grab it, get it now. Um, I just wanted to say to you too, and all the tremendous work you do on this podcast and your coverage of women's soccer, how much it matters. So thank you for doing all that you do because um, as we've seen with beat writers and the importance of uh, being in this space on a daily basis and the grind of it, I know, but like it so matters to in terms of accelerating the game forward. So thanks for what you guys do. Thank you. you gals do. I shouldn't say guys. God, I got to get out of that habit. <laughs> thanks for what you awesome women do. Appreciate it, Julie. We appreciate your time uh, with us as always, whether it's in person in LA or a virtual one-on-one -on -one here on the show. Everybody, you can make sure you follow Attacking Third on all social channels. Make sure you get the book, Pride of a Nation. We're also available as video at youtube.com slash Attacking Third. And we will be back with so much more. Sandra, Lisa, Julie Foudy. Let's go, it. USA. Let's go watch it. Let's go.